Okay, this is the Goldfish class, uh, which consists of Head Start, Preschool, and Kindergarten Arts and Crafts Project for Vacation Bible School 2016 Submerged. And this, this project here, um, the uh, students will learn to make a fish aquarium if um, they're not able to have an actual aquarium of fish. So this is a fun project to try out. So at this time, let's watch the video and see how you can make your own fish aquarium.
okay, that looks like a cool project. So, this is where all Head Start preschool and kindergarten class making up the goldfish room, our goldfish class, will now start their project. So let us take time to pause and start your project, and then we will announce when the project's done, when the time is to clean up. Okay, time to clean up. It's now time to get ready for our recreation uh, fun time exercise activity. Please note that um, there will not be a second project as we have done through for day one through uh, four of Vacation Bible School 2016 submerged. The reason we did two projects is because those that were done well, at Sykes Baptist Church uh, during the Vacation Bible School that they hosted um, were either different, and I compensated for those that I couldn't really access uh, while trying to find others that were related, and at the same time were trying to find uh, projects that, as best I could, that would be closely related to the theme submerged. So at this time, let us go ahead and pause for time to clean up. Okay, now in this activity, this requires some preparation time. And when the parents, that is mom, dad, or both parents that are nearby, or an adult standing nearby, got to view the kit that I made, um, you should have found other written instructions. So make sure that you have had the time to prep for these activities for day five before you actually decide to try the activity. So you will need to Make sure these uh, items are prepped for. If I can, I will have them included in the kit. But if I don't, these are items that you will have to get and prepare for. So uh, let's go ahead and watch the video that shows you what you can do to get your activities prepped for the kids during their fifth and final day of recreation, exercise, fun time. Hi, my name is Steve Brostowitz, a teacher in transitional kindergarten, kindergarten, and first grade. And today I'm going to tell you some outdoor activities you can do with your kids every day. Now the first one involves having a circular pattern on the ground. If you're on asphalt, a lot of schools already have something like this painted on the ground, either in shapes or numbers. And in this case, you have one child in the middle. And this child yells out, circle! And all the kids on the circle have to run and switch to a new circle while this child tries to get a circle. This game gives every kid a chance to lead and the other kids a chance to listen to all the other kids and follow their directions. And this can be done with shapes, numbers, letters, so they're getting practice with those things you're working on. Everyone on number 25, run! So that way, if it's not already painted permanently on your asphalt, you can do it with chalk, or if you want it more permanent, you would use the sidewalk paint chalk, which isn't officially permanent, but will last at least for a few days or weeks, and you usually have to spray it off with a hose. So, depends how long you want to work on that particular thing. If you're only doing shapes for a week, you could probably get away with regular chalk. Now, what if you only have grass at your school? Well, that's great. It's a lot softer for the kids. In that case, you can have things like cones with different things written on them in marker. So you bring out your set of cones with shapes, your set of cones with numbers, your set of cones with letters, and you can play the same game where the kids are switching when this kid calls out, everyone with a square on their cone must change, and they all have to run to a new square while this child tries to find an empty spot. That's game number one. Game number two is an oldie but goodie where you can put an educational twist on it. Red light, green light. For those you don't know, you have one person who's the stoplight, and everyone else is lined up 
And when this person says green light, the kids run towards the stoplight. And when he says red light, or she says red light, those kids have to stop. The first one make, to make it to the stoplight without violating the stoplight rule. For instance, if you say red light and the kid keeps running, they have to go back to the beginning. First person to make it's the winner. How do you make this educational? Well, instead of saying red light, green light, you can do things you're working on in class. If I say a two-syllable word, that means green, go. If I say a red, if I say a three-syllable word, that's like a red light, you have to stop. If I say an odd number, you can go. If I say an even number, you have to stop. Same game, red light, green light, only now the kids have to think about what you're saying and does that mean go or stop, and it's all those skills you're working on in class. These have been two games you can play every day with your kids outside. Okay, so that sounds like a good project for the uh, adult standing nearby or uh, parents, such as either mom or dad or both, to prepare for. Here is the uh, next uh, age appropriate and or grade appropriate activity to prepare for. Again, written instructions will have been included in the box and hopefully you've had time to get that prepared for for, for the fifth and final day of Vacation Bible School 2016 theme submerged. So let us go ahead and watch the video at this time to see how the activity should be prepared for and how it is uh, uh, actually participated in. With Bean's birthday next week, we got a little creative and came up with some easy do-it-yourself party games that you can do for your next party. Ring tosses are one of the funnest party games for kids, and also it's one of the easiest, least expensive games to make. You'll need some pretty bottles. My mom happens to love Pellegrino, so we had some laying around. To remove the labels, soak the bottles in a warm bath with a little dish soap. After a few minutes, the labels will come right off. Take the box that the bottles came in, cut it in half, and cover it with some pretty paper. I use Duck Brand sticky paper. Then you'll need paint or a Sharpie to write point values on the bottles. Have some fun with it. Use any values you want. Place them in the box and you're done. I used gold bangles I found at a costume jewelry store as rings and they worked great. A water balloon toss is another fun way to get your toddler involved. All you'll need are water balloons and a hula hoop. Fill your water balloons and let your toddler try to toss them into the hula hoop. You can even move the hoop farther back for older kids. Water guns are another way to keep cool at an outdoor party. Have some fun squirting ping pong balls, racing to be the first to knock down more balls. All you'll need are golf tees, a large board or thick foam poster board, water guns, and ping pong balls. If you're using a board, you'll need to drill holes the size of your golf tees. You can add a guide to your drill using painter's tape so you don't go through the board. If you use foam, all you have to do is press your tees into the poster board until they stand straight up. Place the board on a table, add the ping pong balls on the tees, and have some fun. Your toddler will love watching the balls fall and even running after them. Lastly, we made a bean bag toss game. Bean's birthday theme is ice cream cones, so we made ours with the holes forming an ice cream cone. We used MDF and cut holes using a saw but this can easily be made using thick poster board. We primed our board and used Crayola acrylics to paint our design. If using a poster board, you can use permanent markers also. For the bean bags, choose a fun fabric and cut into pieces. Ours are five by five inches. If you know how to sew, that is best, but tacky crafting glue will also work. Leave a small opening to fill with beans. Your toddler can help you with this step. Sew or glue the opening shut and you're ready to play. In case you missed it, check out our DIY party pinata from last week. Okay, so as you can see, that was a pretty good project as well for adults standing nearby or the parents, be they mom or dad or both to prepare for. So at this time, we're going to pause while uh, you try out these activities. And then when we return, it will be snack time.
Now it is time for snack time. And if you remember correctly, at the end of day four, we had prepared for the fifth and final day of snack as appropriate to our lesson study for today. Now, what we have here is some uh, small size bag of chips, and these can be bought at any department store. Usually a variety pack is best, so that way it's not the same old, or if a kid wants to be different than somebody else, and it's whatever they grab, that's what they get. Next is the blue cupcake. Mmm. Now, uh, sorry, no pink. Oh, But, you know, blue represents the water, and the theme is submerged. So, uh, this is where you are now allowed to, if you want, to make blue velvet cupcakes. That means when you eat it or slice it open, it's also blue on the inside. Next is the children's cookies. You may need to find special cookie cutters to make these cookies, and I've already covered that before, and they would be individually painted using food coloring or frosting as appropriate, so not to leave a bitter taste, but at the same time, it's sweet to eat. So, this is known as the children, no pun intended, cookies. And then we have our traditional cool aid. Now, in addition uh, to this being the fifth and final day of Kool-Aid uh, drinks that goes with our snack, it is also the same color as our submarine uh, and or porthole color of the theme Submerged. So those is uh, the snacks for the goldfish uh, class to have. So let us go ahead and pause at this time and enjoy our snack. Okay, it's time to clean up. So make sure you clean your plate. Um, normally we would be preparing for the next class, uh, but there is one more activity. And we did this in Sykes Baptist Church uh, as an extra day activity to do, especially since they only do four days instead of the traditional five days like this Bible school. So I decided to throw this in as well. Uh, this will be the activity known as the coloring contest. So at this time, let's pause and clean up and get ready for our final coloring contest activity. Okay, as covered uh, earlier, at the time when it was time to clean up from having our snack, um, this is a coloring contest. <clears throat> now, when we pause, you'll see uh, the general uh, rules. However, I would like to make it clear that um, for Head Start, Preschool, and Kindergartners, no markers allowed. Sorry, those are the rules. This is to show your artistic skills. You can use Crayola crayon or coloring pencils. Now, for uh, the activity, the thing that's really going to be judged is the neatness. Did you stay within the lines? Also, some of you may like purple, blue, or pink. Please do not color all the fish one color. This is to see how your artistic skills will be and giving each fish their own unique color. So do the best job you can. You have 30 minutes to get as many fish as you can colored. When the adult standing nearby or your parent, be it mom, dad, or both, calls time, that means you stop, put your crayon or coloring pencils down, and they will collect the pages. When the time comes for the awards banquet on Sabbath evening, the winner of the most fish colored and neatness, as will be judged, will be announced. So the more fish you color, 
the chance other chances of winning. So you have 30 minutes to color as many fish as possible. Let's begin. Okay, it's time to clean up if you've made a mess, and it's time to turn your coloring sheets in. Did you stop when time was called by the adults standing nearby or your parents, be it mom or dad or both of them? Good. So, the awards announcement of who the winner is will be announced on Sabbath evening. So at this time, let us go ahead and pause and now get ready for the next class. The School of Fish, which consists of 1st grade through 6th grade. Okay, this is the class for, um, uh, no, it's School of Fish, and this is for all grades. First grade through sixth grades, otherwise known as elementary school grade levels. So, at this time, we're going to do our project, um, which is known as the treasure box. Now, for the treasure box, we have a video that shows you how to make the treasure box and put it together. So, at this time, let's watch the video and see how it's done.
So for the uh, treasure box uh, project, with is, which is appropriate for the Vacation Bible School 2016 theme, Submerged, uh, this uh, also is a, a good time to let the uh, class know, for those in grades 1 through 6, that the treasure that the Lord has doesn't necessarily have to come in a treasure box, because on Judgment Day, your rewards will be told to you at the time when the Book of Life is open and your name is found. So it won't come in a box, but the rewards for having been found in the Book of Life will be great, beyond any imagination you could think of. So at this time, let us go ahead and pause and start our project. Time to clean up. It's now time to get ready for our recreation exercise fun time. And so let us go ahead and take a brief pause while we get ready to uh, cover what the two activities are for grades one through six of the School of Fat Fish classroom. Okay, now for this uh, two activities, <clears throat> as was covered for the goldfish classroom, um, <clears throat> I may have the uh, supplies needed for the uh, fifth and final day of recreation uh, exercise fun time and clothes in the kit that I put together. But if I didn't, you will have to get the supplies. And as stated before in the goldfish classroom, uh, for their activities, um, there will be additional instructions for getting the uh, uh, recreation fun time activities prepped for. So hopefully you've had a chance to get this done before the fifth and final day of recreation exercise fun time for those in grades one through six of the School of Fish classroom. So at this time, let us go ahead and watch the video. To see how this first activity uh, can be prepped for. Hey, what's up guys? Tanner and Courtney here. In today's DIY video, we have got out of the studio, left our computers, and we're making DIY games. These are going to be so fun for parties this summer. We have a jumbo jenga set and a ring toss game and they're gonna be so fun so let's jump into it
what you guys think of those DIY projects. We told you they're going to be a lot of fun. Get outside and make them. Your party's going to be a hit this summer if you make them. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel for new DIY videos every week. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye! Bye. like a fun activity project to plan for so this next one now <clears throat> it actually comes in two parts and it's help, hosted by an elderly gentleman who uh, either works at or uh, volunteers or hosts a preschool class so that's kind of cool and so it comes in two parts so I suggest that you watch both parts before you do any preparation. This way you can have all the activity for first grade through sixth grade uh, prepped for and done so that all activities can be participated in. So let us go ahead and watch part one of this next recreation exercise fun time. I'm Jen, I'm a mother of four, and I love to discover new ways to educate kids. I'm Kendall, a mother of two, and I'm a graduate professor who's passionate about child development research. Join us as we explore ways to raise smart, well-balanced kids while staying sane. It's about your kids and you here on Brainstorm Mom. This is Mr. Carl, and he's a retired missionary, but right now he is a preschool and toddler educator, and we look forward to seeing the activities that Mr. Carl has to share with us. Uh, when you think about creative activity for children for the summertime, this is one of those that you can use any kind of a pipe. This happens to be a rain gutter. Make sure that there are not any rough edges on them. Put the little cars here and let them go way down. I tell, tell the children too, you know, they're learning science early on. Gravity has to pull the little car right down like that. And uh, then you can also uh, put, the, uh, put the pipes together if you want. Make a real long pipe and uh, put it that way. So uh, it's just a fun activity with, with little cars. Let them, the children, you can run two or three children at a time to race the cars, or you can do one at a time. We use marbles going down uh, these, uh, these noodles. Most, uh, most everybody takes the noodle when they go swimming in the summertime and you might have some around home. Cut them in half, and as you get them all cut in half, just balance them someplace on the back porch and uh, put a marble in there, and sure enough, it'll go all the way down, and the children just love to do the one by one or even do some racing with marbles. So uh, that's the idea of just using a noodle and let the marbles go right down. So, This is what we call the big box activity and it's one of those activities where parents don't need to spend a dime to put together supplies, pick up the boxes at any grocery store downtown. Nice clean boxes. Of course when you instruct the children you put the big ones on the bottom then you build it up higher and higher and they just love to do it. They say, Mr. Carl, put the box way, way up on top. I even had a teacher one time that climbed up a ladder and put the box way up on top. So anyway, building with boxes is uh, one thing the children love. Then once they fall down, they put, they put them together in a little train track and have all kinds of activity. Down at the station early in the morning. See the little puffer bellies all in a row. See the little driver. Uh, having parades with the children is just a delight that every child likes to get involved in. You can do it for uh, Chinese New Year, you can do it for uh, uh, Martin Luther King Day, uh, 4th of July. We just did a parade here today with 4th of July, so it's the closest thing to having a little spiritual impact in the lives of the children because you can march around and sing God Bless America, you can sing Happy Birthday, Jingle Bells or whatever. And uh, it's just a fun thing. Uh, now, when when the children do the parade, they, there's all kinds of things they can they can take the wagon, the scooters, take the family dog, and just uh, get involved with having a parade. And the children will love it. So we all know.
our kids enjoy imaginative play, but you may not know exactly why it's so good for them. It turns out that kids work through a lot of social and emotional issues as they're playing. Um, I enjoy watching my son play, and I, it's interesting to hear the things that he's talking about because it gives me some insight into what he's working through. So emotional issues, um, children can work through emotional issues as they're playing. The other thing that imaginative play is so good for is helping children to um, learn to take the perspective of others. This is particularly important when they're playing with others. So children learn to remove themselves from their own sort of egocentric point of view and to see the world through another person's eyes. This is really important as they're starting to develop friendships. So if you like what you saw today, please subscribe to our channel and send us your comments and questions in the comment area below. It's all about your kids and you, right here on Brainster Mom. And now this is the second part to School of Fish, grades one through six, recreation, exercise, Fun time. I'm Jen, I'm a mother of four, and I love to discover new ways to educate kids. I'm Kendall, a mother of two, and I'm a graduate professor who's passionate about child development research. Join us as we explore ways to raise smart, well-balanced kids while staying sane. It's about your kids and you here on Brainster Mom. Today is part two of Mr. Carl's Outdoor Activities for Toddlers and Preschoolers. And he is going to focus on ways to develop gross molar skills and to encourage kids to just get out there and play. Welcome to Brainstorm Mom. This is one activity that uh, I sort of hesitated to do and yet uh, I thought, well, let's try it with the children. That is, they do, you have the children come and they climb right up to the top of the ladder and you study them a little bit. This takes more supervision than uh, some of the other activities. And you give them one or two Frisbees, one at a time, and uh, they have a goal that they would, uh, you take this little hoop, try, place it out, you know, just a good space from the ladder and have them throw into it. But they throw two, then they climb down the ladder using two hands very carefully as their dad might train them to do at home. No jumping off the ladder and that way they're safe and uh, we haven't had any accidents at all and the children just love climbing up a real ladder and back down again to throw the frisbee stone. This is one activity that children love uh, out of all the activities we do at my preschool, you just put a little bit of palm olive soap in here, get all kinds of bubbles, palm olive soap doesn't get so much in the eyes of the children. So you put that and get it all sudsy and they love to come and uh, you know, you pour in the cars like this and you wash them and you wash all kinds of animals. And then they say, Mr. Carl, can we go wash the tree? Well, sure, the playground, the sidewalk, sure, just get a pail of water, a little bit of soapy water and they run over there. And you know, it's so delightful to have children be engaged and responsible, cleaning things, uh, making things neat and clean and, and just uh, so excited. Uh, I, have, I do the activity one day, then the next day they say, oh, can we watch toys again? So just try it. It's just a great thing for children to do. Well, for the moms out there and the dads, as far as I've just got to say, I grew up on a farm in South Dakota, so I helped my dad with all kinds of drills and hammers and spades and all kinds of tools on the farm. So it's just natural to help children learn how to use them. So, you know, it's sometimes the first time that a child has picked up a hammer. Otherwise, dad says, don't, don't touch it, you'll bang your head off. So, uh, you know, and so I help them, they come along and they can really pound it. I usually start the nail first so that they don't have to pound all day. But they, once they get it down, man, it's just a celebration. They've pounded the nail down, you know? And then they go ahead and even pound down another one. Sure enough, it goes all the way through. How did that happen? Just because they're learning how to use their muscles, how to control cognitive type of skill, you know? And then also, uh, along with that, we do other activities such as uh, you know, using the bicycle pump. And I say, well, did you ever pump up your bike tire or your, your balls at home? Well, no, but you will put your foot on there and they, they, they just think it's great, you know. And, and I, still, I just congratulate them that they're building their muscles and they pump up the balls and 
well, it's just something that the boys and girls, they're learning life skills. That's bottom, bottom line. So as adults, we sometimes think of play as um, something that's nice if we have the time. But for kids, it's actually a really important context for learning. Kids learn all kinds of things through playing. Um, they learn physical skills, things like dexterity and hand-eye coordination. They also learn emotional skills. Uh, play can allow them to work through different issues that they might be dealing with, to process new information, those kinds of things. And socially, um, play is a great opportunity for them to learn how to engage with other children. So play is really a very important context for learning for children. So if you like what you saw today, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also be sure to send us comments and questions or any ideas that you have in the section below. We'd love to hear from you. It's all about your kids and you, right here on Brainstorm Mom. Okay, so that's the uh, part one and part two of how to prep for the second recreation exercise fun time for the School of Fish fifth and final day recreation exercise fun time. So if you got all these prepped before the fifth and final day of Vacation Bible School's 2016 theme submerged, let's go ahead and pause at this time while you try out both activities. Okay, now it is time for snack time. And uh, unlike before, for days one through four of Vacation Bible School 2016 theme submerged, we do not have a second style of snack or second set of snacks. But with the snacks, this is for the School of Fish, grades one through six, to enjoy. So let's see what we got. Again, we have the uh, variety pack, which can be bought in any department store of chips. Next, we have the blue cupcake. And if you were to bite into it or slice it in half, this, although it's optional, you can have blue velvet colored uh, cupcake on the inside, as well as the blue frosting on top. And it goes with the theme submerged. Next is the children cookies. And again, you may need special cookie cutters to get these uh, done, which I had covered at the end of uh, part four for day four. Uh, again, you don't want to have a bitter taste, so it would have to be each child that goes with our lesson study for today be colored in either appropriate food coloring or frosting. And then we have our uh, theme uh, appropriate Kool-Aid, which is actually orange flavored Kool-Aid. So uh, it would be either match the submarine or the uh, submerged theme portal. That's the snacks. So at this time, let us go ahead and pause for our last call of snacks. Time to clean up. So now it's time to get ready for, uh, ordinarily it would be our closing services, but uh, once again, uh, I like as they did at Sykes Baptist Church because they only did days one through four instead of the traditional days one through five of Vacation Bible School. They hosted a coloring contest. So uh, I decided to throw this <coughs> coloring contest in as well for the School of Fish grades one through six. The coloring contest here is made special for any kid who happens to be either mentally or physically handicapped, or in some cases has autism or ADHD. So I picked what I could, as best as I could, the most appropriate coloring page for their contest. 
So at this time, uh, let's go ahead and uh, clean up and we'll be right back to start our coloring contest. Okay, for this coloring contest, as I briefly touched on it at the time, it was time to clean up from the School of Fish, grade one through six, last call for snacks for their snack time. Um, the rules will that you will see at the time of pa uh, the pause are basically in general. Uh, again, for this class, the thing that will be judged is how many fish are colored. They're not all the same color. They're not just scribbled on. And using their artistic skills, how neat are they? Did they stay within the line? Now, unlike the uh, other class, the goldfish room, they had 30 minutes, but it's also because it was a little more detailed and required more time for them to do a good job and get as many fish as they could. On this coloring page, there isn't that many fish. So, the total time to get this colored is 15 minutes. So, uh, this is a time where each kid should use their time wisely, not be looking around and staying focused on the task. Um, the adult standing nearby, or parent, be it mom or dad, will call time. What that means then is that it's time to stop coloring. Now. The colors that you are allowed to use is not markers. Make sure that you are using crayons only. And when you're done, you put your crayons down and your colors page will be collected. On Sabbath evening, the uh, one who has colored the most fish were neat, not scribbled, and did the best they could to stay within the line will be announced with an award. So at this time, let us go ahead and pause and start our coloring contest for grades one through six, School of Fish class. Time to clean up, if you've made a mess, that is, and time to put all the crayons away nicely. Now, uh, did you stay within the line? Did you not just scribble all over the place? Did you make sure each fish was a different color? Did you stop and put your crayon down when an adult standing nearby or your mom or dad or, or both said to? Great. So now it's time to pause and get ready for closing services.
queue. So that means it's all time to start our closing services. At this time, please go to part three of day five Vacation Bible School 2016 theme submerge for our final fifth day of closing services.